Welcome back to Operations Management. In today's session, we're going to be talking about the relationship between process strategy and process architecture. And by architecture, I'm referring to how the process is designed from start to finish. Before we can actually develop an architecture, we have to go back and take a look at what kind of competencies are needed in the process. And if you recall, those process competencies are related directly back to the product, which of course relates back to the organization's strategy, what kind of products we're developing. Then we take those attributes of those products and figure out what kind of process competencies are needed. So we're looking at, do we have to have a low cost process? Does it have to be done quickly? Do we have to allow for flexibility? and the level of quality we're trying to build into this process. The process architecture will help us determine those process competencies. We can do those process competencies with different kinds of architectures. We're gonna talk specifically about two different architectures. One of them is the job shop, and the other one is the flow shop. Beginning with the job shop, we're looking at an architecture that allows for flexible resources. We're using equipment that can be used for a variety of purposes, different kinds of products. It's a general purpose organization so that we can make different kinds of products, we can make changes to products and so forth. It's also known as the functional or process layout. If you think back to the operations frontier, you'll notice that there were trade-offs. If we use a job shop structure, we're trying to achieve flexible resources. Uh, we're gaining flexibility, but at the same time, we're going to lose cost effectiveness. We're going to lose on process flow time. So what characterizes a job shop is high process flexibility, but high costs and long flow times. The other end of the spectrum is the flow shop. This flow shop is designed specifically for a particular type of product. And this is what many people think of when they think of an assembly line. There are specialized resources that perform specific tasks for that particular product. One product goes through the assembly line. You don't have another product doing that. That's why it's also known as the product layout. So again, when we're thinking about that operations frontier, we have specialized resources. We're giving up flexibility in order to have higher cost effectiveness and also a much shorter process flow time. Between these two, the job shop and the flow shop is something called a batch shop, where it takes aspects of each of these kinds of architectures. When we compare them across the different kinds of attributes of that process design, whether it's product volume, whether it uses specialized equipment, product variety, the machine setup frequency, what kind of labor skills are needed and the variable cost, you can see that with a job shop, we give up product volume. We can't make a lot of it because we don't have specialized equipment, but we are able to make a lot of different kinds of products. But because of that, every time we make a different product, we have to keep setting up the machines. So we have a very high frequency on machine setup. And because the machines are more general purpose, the employees that work on those machines have to be very skilled because they have to be able to know how to make a variety of different products. And as a result, result the variable cost is high as well. For the flow shop, we're going to get a lot of items out because we have specialized equipment. But that means we're making one product. We cannot have a lot of variety to it. It also means that we don't set up machines frequently because all of the equipment is designed for a particular product. And because of that, we don't need very highly skilled employees because they only have to know how to work that machine for that particular product, which also means your variable cost gets lowered. And between the two, the batch shop, well, we can make some product, we use some specialized equipment, we allow for a little variety and so forth. So you can see that it falls between them. So depending on what kind of product we're trying to design, 
we have the process competencies we're trying to achieve, we have to match the architecture to it. Next time when we talk, we're going to be discussing the operational audit, and that is where we verify what is going on in our operations, whether it can meet our strategy for the organization as a whole. See you then.